Hey guys, welcome back to the 429 Podcast. I'm 2. I'm 9. I'm 4. And this is TechCast episode 11. Guys, we've reached episode Ooh. 11. Look Ooh. at that. Right, but before we get started, I just want to tell all our listeners out there, please check out our website, the429podcast.com. Also like, subscribe, and hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or any of our or any of your normal podcast platforms. We can't wait to hear from you guys. It's also Spooky Month, you know. We, spooky we're month. Really excited. So like, <laughs> it's one of our favorite months. So let's. But with that, let's, let's get started into TechCast. So I'm, I'm doing this TechCast a little different this week. All right. I have uh-huh. four main categories broken down for my articles. Right. Wait, I so can guess categories. one. Categories. Uh, <laughs> I wish I couldn't find anything. Oh, uh, come uh, on, man. But the four main categories are COVID-19, Google, mm-hmm. Apple, and then we have what's called the big stories, right? Okay. Which one do you guys want to start off with? Does, that mean, does that mean Amazon, the big stories? No, no, this is not your tech cast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's start off with Google, right? Okay. Sure. So the first news that came out this week, earlier this week, was Google is having a rebranding. What else is new with Google? Okay. Google is renaming G Suite into what's called workspace right okay this is pretty this is pretty interesting because they changed up they introduced the g suite branding back in 2016 right it was a big hit right everyone really like called everything you know like g suite right and now they're shifting shifting the key on everyone and calling it workspace and their logic is mostly just that because everyone's just working remotely you're no longer in a suite of people but you're in your own personal workspace and That's so that right. was kind of, yeah, that was pretty much the gist. That's it. That's what all I got for Google. What, what, <laughs> like, oh, what happens when everyone goes back? Workspace 2.0. <laughs> Listen, dude, <laughs> my, my biggest problem with these like type of branding changes is like, I feel like your original brand, like nine out of 10 times, always just stays like way better. I'm just going to, I'm going to like that to me, that's, that's G Suite. Like, am I really going to start calling that workspace? Like, no, that's G Suite. Like, I don't know. Man, yeah. it's, it's pretty funny though. I thought it was pretty funny when I read it, so I was like, I thought I would add that little tidbit in to start off TechCast. I also um, remember like this decision alone is going to cost some millions because they have to like market it now and like change a lot of things and development work. It's just so unnecessary, but like Google can do it easily. It's it's like at least like when Microsoft moved away from 365 and is just offering standalone um, software again, but mm-hmm. also 365, it's still known as Microsoft Office, right? Yep. This is yeah. literally going from like G Suite to what's Workspace, and then this is gonna be another one of those Google products. We're gonna be like, what the hell is this thing again? Like, it's like it's like calling it from Google Meets to like Google uh, Hangouts. Wasn't it remote? Hangouts to Meets? Yeah, yeah. It was like Hangouts to Meets, and then now it's from like Meets to like remote sessions or something like unnecessary change because of the COVID thing. So stupid. I don't know, man. It's re- it's pretty funny. Um. I don't know what they're going to really go from here, but we'll see what happens. Like, best of luck to Google. Uh, they don't need uh, luck. <laughs> <laughs> they got the money. Best uh, of luck to the winner. They're going to need it. <laughs> let's start off. Now let's get into the Apple stories, right? A couple of interesting ones from Apple this week, right? Sure. Oh. First one, Apple's continuous battle with Epic. I feel like we hit this on every TechCast we episode. Do. But Apple and Epic Games will resume their court battle get this in may of 2021 so the mm-hmm. lawsuit is still on but it's not mm-hmm. till may 2021 so let's see how much you know press that epic and apple can gain from this mostly epic right epics had a huge surge in their Fortnite sales and Fortnite everything since this lawsuit started right so yeah. now now it's still now that it's till may 2021 you better believe they're gonna milk the shit out of this mm-hmm. yeah it's, honestly I'm, i was I'm, I'm not surprised that it's gonna be a while I honestly originally was surprised when the court battle began so quickly because usually these court things take a while for it to go through. There's probably oh, 100. percent So when when they when it started like when the news started hit that they were they were actually already on the progress, I was like, wait, it's been like months already, and so <laughs> so it's actually really it was like really shocking how fast they hit it already. But now it seems like they're going normal, you know, legal proceeding case uh, time zone with like a small court thing just gonna take a couple months if not years to get this thing. I, I, I already said this like a while back. This thing is not going to be done, a one and done. This it's is going to be honestly, year, I don't two see, years. I don't see really, I don't really see Epic winning on this case, to be honest with you. But anyway, it's interesting keeping, though. Keeping it moving with Apple News, right? Four is probably going to talk about more, some more of this next week, but the Apple event is next week, right? And so <laughs> rumors have it iPhone 11, 12 will be out. 
you know, the new Mac, the new Mac OS software will probably be announced as well as probably the Silicon based Apple Macs. So it's going to be pretty exciting to see the new lineup, but also rumors are having it. And I hope this is true, right? That they're thinking about dropping the air tags next week. Uh-huh. So that would be very interesting to see how the air tags really play out because, you know, we've seen screenshots, we've seen on how it works and everything and how like they use iPhones as mesh networks. And it's pretty damn cool. And I kind of want to get my hands on one of them, right? Just for like testing purposes. But like, yeah. What are your guys' thoughts AirTag? on that? It's called AirTag. AirTag. Yeah. yeah. We talked about this. I don't even know what those are. It's the first time here. Basically, about them. Y- you know what Tile is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Apple's version of Tile. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. It just syncs in, but it syncs in either. Rumors have it, there's this own, its own AirTags app. But from renderings and everything I've seen, most likely it'll be like embedded within the Find My app, which would be really cool, right? Like yeah. you could literally just put like an air tag on like your wallet and then you could go to the Find My app and go like, oh, there's my wallet, right? Like it's pretty it's dope. okay though, because in the EU that's going to be banned as soon as they uh, deem that. <laughs> oh, the integrating network, that into you know? apps that are default on your phone. That's not allowed. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Redownload the app store. <laughs> Let's get into the two big Apple stories though, right? So we'll let, uh, for uh, really iterate on Apple's event next week once we actually go through the event. But two big Apple stories that came out this week, right? Mm-hmm. Cybersecurity re- researchers have actually discovered that Apple's T2 chip has an unpatchable security flaw, Ooh. right? Ooh. And the reason for this unpatchable security flaw is that the T2 chip itself has an operating system onboarded for it for security purposes so that they could program the chip. But the problem is you can't access that operating system from your traditional Mac OS. So Apple has no way of actually patching these T2 chips, oh, right? Man. The, but there is a bright side to this, right? The only way to actually hack into the uh, Apple-based computers with this, right? And this is bad because like, if you get hacked with that T2 chip, you, they have root access to your computer. So they can basically do anything in the world with it, right? Or steal any information that they want it off of you. But there's yeah. a bright side to this, right? And with most Apple hacks, right, there's always a bright side to it. They need physical access to the hardware. Yeah, so, that makes sense, right? I mean, if Apple can't patch it, they would definitely need physical access for those reasons. Exactly. So most likely you're going to need, they need physical access to your hardware. But this is in- interesting, not from a personal computing perspective, but from more on like the corporate company computing perspective. Yeah. That mm-hmm. like, you know, you plug in one of those like malicious USBs and get access to it, right? You have corporate computers on corporate networks that you could really take down by doing that. So it's very interesting to see. So those of you who have Macs at your corporate uh, offices, please be careful and uh, think twice before entering any information on those chips. That's crazy. No, and you have to remember, T2 chips have been around for a while. I think the 2017 Macs oh, yeah. were the first one to get them. So it's like, what year? we're in 2020 now, right? Entering 2021. So it's about three years of Macs. And... Apple sells a, a ton of computers, so we're gonna see how this really plays out. But pretty insane, pretty insane, if you ask me. Absolutely. Will the new silicon, uh, will the new uh, Mac silicon chips be affected by this? Do you know? Um, the Mac, so that's a great question. Uh, until those <laughs> chips come out, we won't really know, because no one really has their hands on those chips yet, right? These T2s have been around for a while, so it's been pretty easy to get your hands on a T2 security chip, but um. As long as Apple, if Apple can patch these T2, Apple is aware of this issue, right? So these researchers did report it to Apple. Apple acknowledged that they're aware of this issue and that they're working on it. Mm-hmm. So my best guess would be that, you know, it really won't be affected. But um, that's going to be really how Apple really plays it off. But knowing Apple and the way they take security issues like they've done in the past, like with their bug bounty programs and everything, I think it should be probably resolved in the upcoming Macs. But if you have older Macs, which typically offices have, right? it's going to be a, a fatal flaw in those computers. So it should be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Damn. So very, very interesting. Next story I have about Apple, and this is the final story on Apple, right? And I want to spend a little time talking about this because this is an interesting technology, right? Sure. Yeah, Apple yeah, yeah. has just gotten a patent on a self-healing technology for phone screens. No so way. if your phone screen cracks... Apple has a patent on how they could actually make it a self, quote unquote, self healing display. And it just received the patent for it. They applied for it last year and they actually just got it now. Now, I don't know if this is like some of the other, some of the other Apple patents where it's going to be like, all right, like they got the patent, but it was really just putting some startup out of business or like Oracle out of business and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Or if this is like a legitimate thing they're working on for the iPhones with like liquid retina and stuff like that, right? So. 
I don't know. I just thought it was really cool, and I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on it. That would be dope. I mean, like, here's the thing, right? I think it would have to be very expensive to put that type of screen on a phone. And not mm-hmm. even, not, you know, completely aside from the fact that the technology might be expensive, even if it's less expensive than the current phone screens are, right? Apple mm-hmm. makes so much money off selling phone screen replacements and doing screen repair that they would have to uh-huh. make that money up somewhere else, right? So, I mean, I can imagine a phone like that costing like several hundred dollars more than the regular version of the phone. And, you know, I had that same thought. And so my thought here was that maybe they just filed this patent before some startup has already gotten access to it or Google has access to it and they could just steal the idea under them, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because Google just sells you a new phone. They don't They don't fix screens. They don't give a shit about screens. You could just go buy the next Pixel or some shit that's cheaper anyway, yeah. right? So it's like, I thought this was a very interesting part on Apple. You know, they're more high-end products and stuff like that and so it would be interesting mm-hmm. nine what are your thoughts on it um no my history with apple and their patents this could be a case where they had the idea they think it's really really nice uh and just to make sure no one or anyone else has a similar idea they just patent it just for the security reasons you know to make sure that if they do decide to go fully with this past return phase through implementation there, all that work doesn't go for nothing if someone like beats them to the punch, right? Mm-hmm. So this is just yeah. securing, they're just locking their plans in, uh, in case they pursue to go forward. However, Apple does has a history of, you know, applying for patents, and then never doing anything with them. You know, yeah, we've seen it thousands of times, and that's why I'm not too too excited. But I thought this was just an interesting technology. Yeah, it it, it happens a lot before. I would say. Um, you know, right now the biggest patent that may be true is their, their the one for uh, what's it called, bendable tablet that they patented yep. a couple of years ago. They had the what's it called, uh, a patent years ago for like a VR headset that may or may not be true. They just have a history of doing patents. They had a bunch of car patents. They had car a bunch patents. of car patents on the Apple Car stuff. They had um. I don't know if you guys ever saw that like, fake iPhone video that went viral where, like, you swipe down on the keyboard and you could, like, tap on the desk or whatever and have the keys, like, sink yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They have that patent also, believe it or not. So it's like... They have a history of just doing patents. And it makes sense. From a business perspective, even if, even if you're, like, 50% sure on the idea, you will want to secure yourself for, for yeah. uh, you know, future reasons in case you do decide to realize, oh, this actually would work out and this would be implemented correctly. But, you know, it did not know the future what they thought could work can you know turn out to be either too uh too uh, complicated or just not intuitive enough or just not worth it with the price co- uh, with the price increase like four mentioned earlier this will be pretty expensive for a lot of phones to implement oh, pretty yeah now imagine they added this on like their macs or their ipads or whatever right like that's pretty that'd, damn insane <laughs> that'd be nice I'm, I'm curious what the effects what the limit of the self feeling is like is it? I assume it cracks like festive ones won't, but I'm I'm guessing this will be for like burn-ins and stuff like that. You know, it's more like internal. I assume it's more for scratch and burn-ins than it is for an actual like crack. Yeah, like not not external damages, more like ex- internal ones, more like burn-ins and stuff like that, or like screen tearing mm-hmm. and stuff like that. That be or dead pixels, which is actually a huge problem sometimes because with those cases you have uh, pretty much a finished hardware, and the only real remedy is just to replace it you know that's kind of waste of waste of everything waste of materials waste of time for the user waste uh waste of transaction costs for apple to exchange this is a, a total waste just to re- you know have to change it just for a couple of two dead pixels you know that makes sense because the customer deserves a, all his pixels that he's paying for you know yeah but this will fix the problem entirely you know if two or three pixels are dead no problem just give it a day the pixels will come back <laughs> All right, so that's it on the Apple section of this TechCast, but let's go into the COVID-19 section. And I guess, you know, to satisfy Ford's little bit of craving for Amazon, right? Alexa, do I have COVID-19 is the story for today. (laughs) Do I have it? What they are actually working on, researchers across um, the whole world actually are currently working on ways that you can detect COVID-19 from the sound of your voice. And they're using mechanisms what? such as Alexa, Siri, uh, Cortana, as well as Google, as well as Google's uh, assistant, to figure out and listening in on special cues to see if do you have COVID nineteen, basically. 
Yeah. Alexa, do I have cold? <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Right. And I'm I'm interested in how this is going to really play out, you know. So just from the technical perspective off the top of my head, the way I really see it playing out is, you know, it's your basic machine learning algorithm, right? Like you yeah. have a bunch of people who mm-hmm. have COVID-19, they talk into a microphone, and then they, you just plug in the data set into other people. And it's like, maybe you test for the hoarseness of their voice. You know, you test for, you know, what their regular voice sounds like, what their voice sounds like during COVID, or what their voice sounds like post-COVID. Right, if you have those types of metrics in place and everything, you know what this sounds like it, to me now, a privacy issue. Yeah, you know, a major privacy issue. Okay, <laughs> I like, knew like, was like, like, like you, you really think that Amazon and Google were storing all of your voice backups so you can go back and listen to your requests and listen to what you've asked your Alexa? <laughs> yeah, bullshit. This is why they were storing all your stuff. Like everyone knew, or at least I knew. Obviously, they were storing it for their for themselves so that they could use it for some other projects in the future. Right, so. I mean, obviously they're using it in this case. It's a great usage of it, but I mean, it just goes to show you that you know the data they store on you, they're using it for whatever they want. Hundred percent. Yeah, but think about all the malicious use cases, right? Oh, imagine absolutely. you agreeing. Imagine you agreeing to a verbal contract on the phone that you don't remember talking about, but your phone did automatically. Mm-hmm. Like well, it's I, terrifying I, I, to see, you know, the I'm horrible all, use cases that come from this. I'm also, I'm also kind of worried that, like, let's say you they. They do detect that you have COVID. Who? What? What's that? Is that information only shared between you? I highly doubt it. I, I feel oh, like. Oh hell no! And that's a, that's a huge privacy issue. Like you may not want people to know you have COVID because you know that that puts a a huge flag on you. You know, I mean it's up to you. Imagine YouTube. walking. Imagine walking into like a doctor's office or something. You know where they're doing temperature checks or a restaurant and doing temperature checks. You just say, "Hey Alexa, do I have COVID?" And then all of a sudden the thing just goes beep. Yeah, you have COVID. Yes, you have COVID. And then, <laughs> And then everyone around you knows that you have COVID. Now you're like that black sheep in the middle of the restaurant, right? Like I'm also thinking like really dystopia. Like, wait, like, like, what, what if you get to the future where like Alexa detects you have COVID? You don't even ask Alexa if you if I have COVID. It just it hears you talk and it's like it has COVID. Silent flag goes up, sends it over to the data centers. Yep. And now and now healthcare's and health insurances have this information. Guess what? They know ahead of you that you have COVID. And this is why I will never own a Alexa or a Google yeah. or an Apple Mini you know or what? any of Think these about items. It. I, don't, I don't even know if HIPAA laws apply in this situation, right? Because HIPAA laws only <laughs> – I'm, I'm, if you know, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, the the Healthcare Information Protection Act is, I think, essentially what that stands for. Um, I believe that only relates when it's between an employer, a healthcare professional, some type of third third-party contractors that are working in that loop, and yourself. So never, when, you never have, Alexa. When, when, when Amazon is nowhere, <laughs> yeah. you know, nowhere involved in that privacy chain, right? Like, how does that work? Are they even required to treat that like personal medical information on you if they think you might have had COVID? Let me answer so, that for you. No. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, this, you know, everyone thinks their, their medical information is totally protected. Meanwhile, these medical laws that we have in terms of privacy – Probably don't even don't even uh like they're not they're not even they're not even involved in this type of that ordeal. I doubt that they were thinking of you know what maybe Alexa will have this kind of information. We should we should write that in. There it's just not. Hey, look, I'll tell you one real gonna happen. Real thing here. I'll tell you the biggest thing here, and like I think we've alluded to this in the past, right? Yeah. You don't have government leaderships across the world in place that actually understand technology to this extent. No. Nope. Right. So I think that's the biggest issue you see with having like something like this or anything like this because you're basically letting these guys loose right you're letting these tech companies loose and they're doing whatever they want with your data or you're letting these credit card companies loose and they're doing whatever they want with your data but like there's a breach there's anything goes wrong there's a hack or whatever there's no consequences man don't worry brother i got you with two years of free credit monitoring Cha-ching! there it is hey, 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 hey. i know you've been affected deeply don't worry here's your 12 dollars for your loss of data yeah like it's it's freaking nuts right there's no responsibility for that and that's the biggest issue that's yep. plaguing you know not only the united states but i think all across the world right like I, you can't you can't have it you can't have these guys get away with data breaches if there's a data breach that should be an enforcement of some some type of government law in whatever region you're located, right? Wherever the breach happened. Yep. 100%. Like, there you should know, be punishments or something in place. There, there's big consequences to data breaches. So, for example, believe it or not, one of the antivirus companies that I use 
was breached a while back, and some scam callers must have gotten their hands on the records of that data breach. And now every once in a while, I get a call from this same guy. He's like, hello, my name is John Smith, blah, 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 blah. I'm from X, Y, Z. Oh, deep John Smith. Ass Indian accent. <laughs> And, some deep Indian oh, wow. accent. and and uh, and I'm like, dude, like I know where you got my data. I'm like, I, I sure tell him, I'm like, I'm aware that there was a data breach two years ago, and you got my data, right? Like, I know where you got it. I know no. you're not actually from that company. Like, <laughs> like, and plus, like, I'm I, I I was at least was a cybersecurity professional like under a year ago. Like, you're barking up the wrong tree here. You're never gonna scam me. So you the want guy, the insurance plan or no? <laughs> the guy goes, no. <laughs> but yeah, I'll catch so, you in. But anyway, guys, I thought this was just something interesting, right? Like, yep. um, it, I thought it was just pretty interesting to see. And I'm interested to see how it really plays out, right? Because, you know, it, it, it is definitely cool. Like, I do think stuff like that is, is, is very, very neat. I just don't like how a lot of companies do it willy nilly, and like I think all I, these I, don't different... what, I don't like what it alludes to, you know. Exactly. Like, correct, right? I think I think all of this stuff needs to be opt in on an individual case by case basis. There should be no just global like, oh, we already have the data. Can we use it? Maybe like you know, maybe we're just gonna have you hit accept on some terms of service somewhere, and that's gonna let us use your data everywhere. Like, and I think yeah. the biggest thing, and I think the biggest point you bring up for that, right? The default answer should be no. Of course, I yeah. Think a lot of it should be an opt. It should be an opt in, not an opt out thing. Exactly, because a lot of the companies have it where it's an opt out, not an opt in. Right? That's yeah. how they get you with these kind of things, like Google tracking yeah. your search history and stuff. That's an opt. That's an opt out feature, not an opt in feature. Hundred percent. Right. So, like bookmark syncing, an opt out feature, not an opt in feature. Right. So it's like all these things need to have by default opt out features. But then, look, are they gonna do it? Hell no, because they make their they make ninety percent of their money off ignorant people who don't check that shit. Right? Know, a, lot, a lot of the time too, like take for example, like that Google Sync you just brought up. I'm pretty sure the way that works is it's called Google Sync, and it's like they, they ask you in a pop up, like, would you like to enable Sync? And like they don't really tell you what it is, and like everyone just you know everyone just hits through. Yep, yep, okay, yeah, I do. Yep, yep, yep. I or they give you Google. one of those, or they give you those one of those like threatening, like semi threatening, like notes saying. No, Google Chrome may not work best when you're when you don't say yes or something like that, right? Exactly. Google like, Chrome might break if you don't say yes. All right, so exactly. you want to use it? Well, I don't like, want we're using Chrome Google, to break. We're, so gotta... we're using yeah, we're using Google Chrome here as, as an example, but you have that with so many different services from like yeah. your Yahoo's and your internet companies to like you know freaking ESPN the other day when I'm playing fantasy football to like like I'm not stupid like I get it right. 100%. But, a lot of companies are fully. We're not just trying to point out Google here. And like a lot, and I mean a lot of companies go for the opt-out approach because it's easier for them to implement, and they still technically follow the guidelines and the, on the rules. Technically, they do. Yeah. Technically, they do. Yeah, but uh, a lot of a lot of especially I think the EU are starting to catch on to that. There are been some movements in in making policies of a lot of things should be an opt-in by default. And hopefully yeah, and get- Europe is really, and you know, we make fun of the EU all the time on this podcast, right? Just because, like, you know, our EU uh, uh, listeners out there, we love you guys, but like sometimes we find some of the tech policies that the EU itself is really making. It's just really funny, and so mm-hmm. we can't help but mock. But it happens, you know. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna continue with news stories. Next news story: the UK's COVID-19 numbers have been spiking up like insanity, right? Okay. And and you would think that it would just be that more people in the United Kingdom are just getting COVID, right? Of course. Mm-hmm. That's not actually necessarily the case. So since the beginning of the pandemic, um, they've been tracking all these COVID numbers on like this Excel sheet or whatever internally at like oh, their no. their talk version technology. of their CDC, right? Talk yeah. technology, talk technology. Um, the guy who was tracking it, um, funnily, funnily enough, had missed a column on the uh, Excel sheet when he was summing up all the numbers. And um, and uh, (laughs) turns out he was doing that for months, and they just found out about it, and so that's why (laughs) he didn't see that that one column was not colored. (laughs) (laughs) Like that's a big red flag. Well, he works for the government, right? He's probably on like Excel two thousand five. So yeah, 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 my my bad, Matt. They don't have color. Ironically, (laughs) ironically, you would think, right? But as I was reading the article, they're on pretty later versions of Excel, like twenty seventeen and stuff. Come on. But it was funny because you had one of their. It was funny because you had one of their representatives in like the House of Commons or whatever they call it, right? Yeah. Like their version, their version of um, like the the House of uh, the Senate, not like Senate and House. 
yeah. is their version of the house, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They had a guy arguing up there saying, no, he was using some legacy technology and that we told him to upgrade months ago, yada, yada, yada. When it turns out this guy really just messed up and forgot to add a column. Oh, oh God. So. It happens, it happens. You know, sometimes you forget to re- put a comma here. Other times you miss a whole column of important uh, COVID records and you know what? Cook up the numbers. And it was funny. It was funny because one of my coworkers brought this up to me and then I found out about the story and it was just, I don't know. It's really interesting at the same time. At the same time, it's kind of scary because like this is a deadly virus, right? Yep. So it's like if these numbers were being used for other things, it could be that you may have overexposed people to people who had COVID. So you know, this could so, be, so this could have so, down repercussions. And this so is it higher true. than it should be? Yes, it's yeah. significantly higher than it should be. Okay. Well, this okay. just goes to show you, right? And I feel like a, a lot of, a lot of people do this when it comes to working in a role with either like this or just any role with technology. People don't double check themselves. Like they don't, there's like a lot of, a lot of the time, there's just no going back and making sure that things are correct or make going through the formulas and being like, oh, okay, did I actually include all the data I need? Right. And I mean, like, I feel like if it was that drastically off, um, they might've, they might've really wanted to just do something like, you know, look at it and make sure that it was correct. You know I mean? Like, you know, when you've been compiling that data, if he missed a whole column, like, I mean, that should be a pretty large difference. And I would assume that anyone who's been compiling all that data should have at least some rough idea of what the output might be. Right. So, I mean, it seems like it was just more, I mean, it seems like it was just negligence, but maybe, maybe there's something more to it. Maybe there is, right. I don't know, but I th- I just thought it was pretty funny because it goes to show you at the end of the day, you could build the most fancy technology, you know, system in the world. You're still going to be stuck with, humans right so it's like there's really no getting around this i'm i'm reading that um it's not really a fact that one missed a column but it's more of a fact that apparently they were using a very old format called xls right Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. import everything and xls is a really outdated format that's one of the first formats excel supported it it was invented back in 1987 but because Mm -hmm. it's so legacy the Mm -hmm. format it can only hold uh, 65,000 rows of data. Oh, no. Okay, okay. So what happened was all this all this data was being converted to this XLS format for it, so it can be templated into Excel and which it would be shipped to websites and stuff like that for uh, record keeping. But since it was being formatted to such an old frame um, um, format, so much data was lost to the conversion. To be fair, I don't necessarily know if I believe that just because I've used XLS um, actually recently. And I had over 200,000 rows in that XLS, it's right? It's XLXS is what you're using. Right. No, it was XLS because uh, I had to pick a drop down, right? And so, you sure? Because it says yeah. right here, this is XLS, but XLS was the, the standard was changed, was uh, uh, surpassed by XLSX in 2007. You know, I was using XLS the other day for actually one of our projects. So it's very uh, interesting. That's the, that's the limitation apparently to this format. That it can only hold so much, and according to this website, uh, this article, that was primarily the reason why uh, they were losing so much data. It was this old format, and, and I love this quote. They said, "Basically, any high schooler should know that this format was not capable of holding so much data." Yet, apparently, the people in the government of the United Kingdom did not know that, and mostly their health officials. Happens so the best of us when you're a government official and getting paid big bucks. You know, you just forget you know? XLS is an outdated format. What can you do? But uh, let's keep going. Two, and now we hit our final category for this evening, right? And it's, mm-hmm. well, evening for us right now. But uh, the two big stories are, <clears throat> first being the, the house investigation faulting Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google for anti-competitiveness and monopoly-like actions and antitrust, blah, 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 blah. They're back. Right? They're back, right? Oh, God. I okay. think this was the third, okay. the third or the fourth house call that they're doing honestly these ceos should really just uh, like buy a house down there at this point um it's, it's ri- yeah it's ridiculous it's we're seeing where it really goes here but it's back to you know the same old same old you know congress acts acting a- asking the google ceo for some tech support asking tim cook if they could give him the new iphone in advance and pretty much saying jeff bezos mm-hmm. why the hell are you so rich and where's your tax return um so also oh, can i get my amazon prime delivery tomorrow 
<laughs> so yes, yes, this is yes. basically <laughs> this is basically what's going on. What's gonna come out of this? Like all the other house investigations and all of this, absolutely nothing, right? And to be honest with you, I think this is more just of an election ploy with the upcoming elections coming up in the United States. All getting all these house representatives and senators to be like, oh yeah, I fought for your monopoly rights for these big businesses. But I mean, we could see, the- right? Like think about it. this. This is now you have the Senate, which is Republican majority. And the House, which is Democrat majority, both of them going after the same group of people. So, I mean, maybe since you've got both kind of players on the same field here, maybe you might be able to see something come out of it. But like, you you might be right. Yeah, it's just the, it's just the thing here, right? Like every time every time we see one of these just government organizations with this stuff, I've I've never seen it go anywhere. I don't see it going anywhere again this time. Would I prefer that we had something more like uh, Europe, like a GDPR kind of thing, right? Where like some data requirements or regulations come out of this? Absolutely. But will that actually happen? Probably not, right? So we'll see. It, it's definitely a interesting case. I, I do I would agree with you too that this is definitely involvement of the election coming up, and yeah. there's sort of some spotlight going on over there. Um, I think it's all really just PR for all those guys who are up doing the election, which sucks, right? Because I want to see them actually deal with issues, regardless of whatever side you are, right? Just deal with the issues. But like, I, I, I feel I, like it's really just PR here. I, I want to, I want to be totally against this investigation, as long as it's completely different from the last time. You know, like give them actual not, chance. No. <laughs> it's not. I know it's not. I know it's not. But if if they are gonna do it, the only way I can really justify it is that. You know, they completely changed the format how they did it last time. Give them actual time to actually answer the questions. And, you know, it should be less more of an attack towards these guys and more an actual, like, investigation, investigation. Yeah. And also, I asked this question last time. I'm going to ask it again this time. Bro, where is Satya? Like, where is the Microsoft CEO? I'm so very surprised they're not uh, picking up on this here. Also, what all... is... I heard Twitter was, might be invited to this. Are they not? How can Twitter be invited when everyone's using a Windows computer? This doesn't make any sense to me here. <laughs> like, yeah, but, but anyway, Twitter still has long influence. So. But anyway, final news story, right? And this one affects us in a very deep way, right? I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but this is the Google versus the Oracle um, lawsuit that's actually heading to the Supreme Court. Wait, what? Now, what what this is actually going to establish is that who's better? Do we, do we have the right to API usage? Hmm. What? So do we as developers actually have the right to actually use someone else's APIs as part of our software, right? What? Oracle Oracle is actually on the side of saying that, hey, if you use my API, that's technically copyright infringement, Ooh. right? And that's the big sticking point You mean public APIs, point like public available APIs? Correct. Okay. No. Uh, well, APIs developed by these companies. So if Oracle developed a bunch of Java APIs, right? Yeah. That Google that Google uses as part of its Android operating system. Oracle is saying right now that that is copyright infringement. You stole our information from about Java and a bunch of this stuff. Where Google's like, bro, these are APIs. Like we're just developers using these APIs. But are these like public APIs? I think that's what Ford's trying to like. Are, are they available? Because yeah, like, I'm, just, like, I'm trying one... to figure out what you mean by APIs. Like when you say yeah, APIs, because... are you talking about like the like like a custom Spring Boot framework that they're using to host APIs, or like they're trying or, like, to take data from their APIs? Like what's yeah, or like the... a so public think of API. Purpose. API. Yeah, well, think of APIs in the sense like you know how you require developer licenses to use like Google's API and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my understanding from this article. This article doesn't make it too too clear. And that's the one qualm about this article. Mm-hmm. And so I have to look deeper into this research. Um, I just didn't get time to this week. But the okay. basic gist is that the fight is against Oracle. It can Basically, the main gist of the fight is if you are using an external API, right? Okay. Is it considered copyright infringement? I can answer that. No. It's external. If they, it, wanted, if they wanted to not want to use it, just make it an internal only use API. It is scary that, token. Bam. Yeah, like it, it exists. Like Oracle's fighting for something that already exists. Just close it. Make it in-house API only. That exists. Companies do it all the time. But this is a very interesting case here because you know we've talked about this in the past, but copyright laws and patents and everything within the software engineering and tech community really stifles innovation. And this is one of those really, really interesting. This is actually one of those really interesting court cases that if Oracle wins on this case. Right, 
It's going to be bad news for everyone. It's a big win for copyright lawyers and everything. It's a really, really bad loss for the developers because it really brings up a lot of points saying that if I build a service and I make publicly available APIs and, for example, 4 and 9, if you guys use my APIs and you guys don't credit me for that API, I can technically sue you guys for gross negligence and copyright infringement. Hell, even if I do credit you, I feel like Oracle will still go with the route of suing me. Exactly. I this, found a much, I found a much deeper trifle. article on the case, which I think we'll read after the tech cast is over, but it's really um, this was it's just actually trifle. a really big one. This was just strife yeah. for innovation, honestly. Like, if as a developer, already off the bat, I'm going to be paranoid if this comes out Thor's article case of using anything. Like, are we and talked the biggest about thing, this, like a long time ago, the, the, I think we talked about this during, like, if, uh, if, if, uh, if you can break the internet. We talked about progression happens so long because we, we build foundations after foundations that we rely on to allow developers to work more focused on actual co- actual algorithms and logic that should be worked on and not the nitty gritty stuff. But you lose that entirely if I'm worried about an API that I could be sued over tomorrow. And right now, the way it's really playing out, Oracle, I think, won one of the court cases. Google won the other court case. And so that's why it's going straight to the Supreme Court to get mm-hmm. the final decision here. Yeah, it's but, um. One. This is a big, big, big uh, thing for fair use APIs, and we'll see how it's gonna—it's gonna really affect but, the developer and open source community if yeah. Google loses out on this case here. So we should um, do a deep dive on this. I think this is really important. To be yeah. really it's a re- deep, it's a deep thing. Maybe it'll be our next, uh, you know, podcast episode, guys. We drop should, us a comment if you guys want to hear about it, right? Like also, though, give us some even bigger than this, though, I did just yeah. discover XLS yeah. books do have a sixty-five thousand five hundred thirty-six row limit. Bam. There you go. Now we just prove tube is wrong. Why do they always have to prove I'm wrong? (laughs) Also, also, it's just so easy. 256 column limit wide. Bam. There you go. There's your columns that you were losing. There you go. Again, tube, wrong. uh, And on that note, (laughs) this was a great, great episode of TechCast. Amazing. Action. Fantastic. That's just because they proved me wrong. (laughs) For no matter what the reason, it it was still fantastic. I think our audience agrees. Uh, we had some nice, some cool news stories. Uh, maybe a couple of them we can, you know, bring into full episodes later on. Uh, but on that note, I'm four. I'm two. And I'm nine. And we will see you guys on our next Monday episode. Be good. Have a happy, uh, you know, spooky month. Enjoy getting your costumes and stuff ready for Halloween. And we'll catch you later. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.